A few months ago, I put a video up here on the YouTube channel showing a great stretch for tensor fascial arta, TFL, a muscle up around the outside of the hip. Quite often in runners, we find that that muscle gets that little bit tight and it can start to be a contributing factor to problems like ITB syndrome. In this video, I want to look at why it starts to get tight rather than just what we can do to stretch TFL. Okay, so let's talk about tensor fascial arta. That little muscle we were talking about earlier, up around the outside of the hip, kind of picture, though, if you can imagine wearing a pair of jeans, that little pocket just outside of your hip, the small pocket, that kind of has no purpose. That's the kind of region we're talking about for TFL. A lot of the time when people talk about being quite tight around the hips, particularly the outside of the hip, if they've got a history as well of ITB syndrome, TFL is a muscle that's well worth checking because quite often it does get a little bit tight and can be a contributing factor as to why the ITB starts to experience that little bit more tension and starts to become a bit of a problem. Now, we need to think about the role of TFL. Okay, so typically we can certainly think of one of its roles as being abducting the hip, so taking the leg away from the midline, in the same way that glute med and glute min also do the same, that they all have components of abduction. Now that's a really important point to make as a start, because when it comes to abducting the hip, we can also think about the way in which that abduction moment around the hip is a big part of our ability to stabilize the hip. So to stand on one leg and keep the pelvis sitting on top of the hip in that nice stable position. Now, ideally, we want glute med, glute max, and glute mid all working together to provide a little bit of stability there, and TFL also contributing, but not in a massive, massive way. Certainly part of the picture, but not in a big, big way. Now, if glute med, for example, isn't doing enough of a job to provide that lateral stability around the hip, then what you'll find is muscles like TFL end up having to work harder and getting into a position where, where they, they're kind of hypotonic, if you like. They become, the muscle tone becomes too much, they end up getting tight, and that starts to pull on the top of the ITB. Now, if we pull on the top of the ITB, that adds in a little bit of stra increased strain into the ITB and can start to cause those problems lower down towards the knee that we're all familiar, familiar with in terms of ITB syndrome. Another way of thinking about the role of tensor fascial arta, particularly as we start to get into hip flexion, so bringing the knee up in front of us, is it becomes a little bit more of a hip flexor. Now, we don't think of tensor fascial arta as being a hip flexor traditionally, but as the lever arm of the muscle around the hip moves as we get into hip flexion just because of the position of the muscle relative to the center of rotation of the hip all of a sudden tensor fascial arch can become that little bit more of a hip flexor now if we're weak through our hip flexors so iliopsoas through rectus femoris so iliopsoas kind of be the pre being the primary hip flexor there rect a bit more of a secondary hip flexor if we're weak through any of those structures or strength endurance isn't what it should be, and I'll come to that in a second, then what we find is that TFL can start to become, or start to do its best, if you like, in terms of trying to create hip flexion throughout running gait. So if you can imagine as we're running, we need to get the knee up in front of us to get onto the next stride, we need to get into that hip flex position. But in doing so, if we're weak through those hip flexors, we get into a position where synergist muscles, and by synergists, essentially, I mean muscles that are more so there to assist movement and provide stability, rather than create movement um, as prime movers, as you'd see from the, the bigger muscles, like for example, rectus femoris, the big muscle down the front of the thigh, we end up with a synergist trying to do the job of these bigger muscles, these prime movers. Problem is, because these synergists, like tensor fascial arta, are only small muscles, they haven't got particularly effective lever arms either, then all they can do is do their best and get really tight. So that's the position we find ourselves in with muscles like TFL in this kind of instance. Why I say strength endurance is because, and again, this is a classic pattern I see every time we come around to a marathon training season, we get runners to a point where perhaps they're comfortably able to run 10K week in, week out, and then they step up to a marathon training program and they need to do 14, 16, 18, 20 miles of a Sunday. Long Sunday run, classic kind of time of the week to do it. All of a sudden they're pushing their boundaries in terms of the <coughs> essentially time on the feet, if you want to think of it in that simple way. They get to a point where they've reached their limit when it comes to strength endurance of the muscles they really should be using to pr produce these bigger movements in the running gait. So hip flexion, for example. And as they get tired, other muscles try and take over. These synergists try and take over. Muscles like tensor fasciolata tries to create hip flexion, which should be created by those hip flexors.
they're fatigued, TFL takes over, and we get into this synergistic dominance type of situation. So, to really kind of, I suppose, distill this down, we need to think in two ways. TFL, is it working harder because the abductors are weak, so the glutes are weak, glute med, glute min in particular are weak, upper fibers of glute max perhaps weak, or, and it's an and or, is it tight because our hip flexors are weak? 